Oh, we gotta get Figgy with it. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> welcome to Tap Haven, episode 15, <laughs> where we are taking another trip down under. Yeah, Good day. we're trying to do it around when they're awake. Because uh, usually Nat and yeah. I are asleep right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The boys are yeah. staying staying up a little late for me. Mm. No, for the Australians, it's, it's not for Eric. It's for the Australians. Oh, okay. okay. It's, okay. it's fair. only for fair. the Australians. Fair. fair, fair. Why would I ever stay up for the man who does not sleep? <laughs> Valid. Valid. <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know, Eric doesn't sleep. Eric just waits in his room. <laughs> Yeah. He's he's like he's like the less intimidating but just as equally dangerous uh version of Chuck Norris for our generation. He's just like <laughs> he's just uh, working on some kind of project late at night. I don't wait for the morning. The morning waits for me. The morning doesn't even wait for you though. You're like I've calculated the morning. That's what basically <laughs> that's where you're at. You're not trying to beat up anything. You're like, "No, I understand you." I just think that it's crazy like it. that Eric only sleeps like five hours a night when Bro. I had to wake him up for like a final exam in college. And then he was like, I'm up, I'm up. And I got him completely out of bed because I know this guy. He doesn't get up. Mm -hmm. I got him out of his bedroom. And then I went back to the guest room to go to sleep. I wake up like three, <laughs> four hours later and he is fallen asleep passed out in the hallway no and i'm, I I'm like, I did, I'm, I'm like i missed my exam yeah. <laughs> he completely missed it uh, you were young and reckless and now he only drinks i was seat. young and reckless <laughs> ridiculous i had also calculated that i didn't need to take the exam See, guys, to pass the course he understands <laughs> the dawn <laughs> i've made a calculated risk for sure. Oh my god. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But, uh, so how's your else week been? How's your week Anthony, going? Anthony, you go first. You know the, you the know dogs the are forever babies. We've got They are. We've had our dogs for 6 years. They're like 8 years old. And you know by now if they were babies, if they're human, you know, humans, I think they'd be doing some manual labor, lots of chores around the house, be helping out. Instead, you know, they just wake you up at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Yeah all three of those in a row and you get no sleep <laughs> this is a yes geez. yes <laughs> are 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 you and uh you and your wife light sleepers or are y'all heavy sleepers like do they wake you up just by moving in and out of the bed no they wake you up by uh so there's actually things about it that are kind of programmed into you as a human being uh mm -hmm. when they whine when they are panting it wakes you up yeah, it, walking yeah. around, especially the doesn't. Panting. Yeah, but because when they are stressed, you hear that. I mean, we we have co-evolved with dogs, you know, and so <laughs> they really are like the best alarm or not alarm. Oh yeah, intruder no, alarm not, in a way. They, they, intruder alarm. Yeah, they, everything that they do to in, uh, to induce some form of emotion is usually hardwired into what their relationship was with us in like ancient times. Yeah. So like, yeah, when they, when they whine or when they bark, they breathe heavy. They, they have a change of breathing patterns now at this point in time. Cause like now I, I wake up whenever Kiko starts like having a dream. Yeah. Like I'm like, Oh, it's so cute when they have a dream <laughs> and they're like running while they're oh yeah asleep it's like they're in the they park. got their little legs up in the air mm -hmm. it's even cuter i love the barks yeah and it's oh, like yeah. you can tell they're like yeah. talking to another dog and they're, <laughs> they're like yeah. having a blast yeah. it's just it's absolutely That's adorable adorable i will say De deku and yui who are uh anthony's dogs they don't they don't even try to wake me up anymore they they gave up on that they just go straight to my wife That's hilarious <laughs> Eric, scoot over. I'm clapping so I can time save it. Scoot over. So you can go ahead and get into... Because I do the same thing. I see, I'm seeing it in the shorts now. I'm like, just get on over. <laughs> get on over. He's leaning. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, same. I do it all the time. Oh, man. But just babies? That's it, Anthony? Did we have a podcast last week? Yeah. So I already talked about Ooh. Udon and Sushi. No, no, no. We didn't. We did. No, we, did. We, did. We, did. we did. We did. We did. We did. We did. Uh, it was it was cut short. I have some 
secrets uh, to reveal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. Later? Yeah. Fantastic. It's just been a sleep deprived. Deprived. <laughs> you see? You deprived. see? It's been wow. a sleep, sleep deprived week. So <laughs> that's about it. Amen. It's a damn shame. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm. But I have oh. been. Oh yeah, go ahead. No, you got. No, more. I was gonna. I was gonna ask how your how your week went. Man. I am currently on week three of waiting for answers on a big thing, and uh, I don't know how people stay productive at the same time waiting for like big news. Like it could be like small stuff, like oh you you bought something nice and you're waiting for it to ship in. So I like I you don't really see it in the long form, but whenever you're waiting for something big and it's like multiple weeks that you have to wait for it, I don't know what it is about it. I can't get anything done. Like hmm. nothing. Like I I've been trying to like grind out videos to like to study. Um, getting on to like play any video games i can't do it like it's like a yeah. mini it's like a weird mini depression where like i'm not exactly uh, sad i'm just like in limbo and my dude, body's I, not like this is not like it yeah dude i i feel that man that's so re- relatable because mm-hmm. it's like you i feel like when you're in between these big stages in your life and you know they're gonna happen mm-hmm. those transition periods you know that whatever you're going to be doing in that transition period, not know, but you feel like everything you do in that transition period is going to have to be put on hold once you get to that next big stage. Exactly. And so you don't have like this motivation that is almost needed to to take action and do things. Yeah. Right. Because you're like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to start this forty hour video game. Oh, I don't want to start this new project i don't want to start this new studying course because exactly i'm going to have to put it all on hold and restart it later because i'm going to be dealing with this new stage and it's going to be right. a big transition piece yeah, yeah. so yeah i've definitely. definitely experienced this before too and then i think i've for me i've ended up just assuming if it's something that may or may not happen i'm acting as if it's not gonna happen if it's as if it's not a thing that way if it does happen that's great you know i'm i'm prepared for it to happen I've gotten ready but in my mind it doesn't exist anymore I, i'm putting it away and then gonna keep on you know making lists working on the things i want to work on and mm-hmm. trying to enjoy other things because yeah i felt that way that you feel now and you're just like i don't want to feel that way so it's like okay well if, yeah it um, sucks <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can try that, you know, put it away from your mind, be like, it didn't happen, or it's not, or not, it didn't happen. Just like, it doesn't exist. It's like trying to forget a spoiler. A level of, <laughs> that's a level of multi, uh, what is it? Whenever you're able to do multiple, uh, multitasking. Yeah. It's a level of multitasking that I'm trying to like, this is the first time I'm having to do it. Like, this is the first time that I've had like this big of a shift happen mm. in the middle of me being an adult, I guess. So it's, it's growing pains, so I think, but um, yeah, that's what I'm going through. Right. I think now. one of the best things for that sort of stuff is stoic stoicness, stoicism, listening to some stoicism. like stoic, uh, wisdom can like listening to some stoic wisdom. Yeah. I've been listening to Bill Murray. He's probably not stoic. Mm. No, it's a band. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Murray is great. Bunch of hog, oh, hog twerking boys over there. Mm-hmm. That's funny. <laughs> I know. I know. For me, it's the I forget his name. He was in the Navy SEALs. Jocko Willink. Uh, I can't remember if it was him or not. Or, I, 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 but he was in the Navy SEALs and he talked a lot about their ideology, which a lot of people have talked about it. But I heard it from one guy in particular who did a. I think he did an opening speech somewhere where he really brought it, like teased it out. And then I was like, oh, I want to go learn about that. And this was like decades ago at this point. I think it was back when I was in high school. And he talked about their ideology of always thinking about the next thing and going through their task list and essentially being like, okay, I'm climbing a ladder on the side of a mountain with no support system and if i fall i die and i might kill the people below me 
And he's like, you're in this super high stress scenario and there's so much risk and you just need to focus on one thing at a time. So it's like, okay, I'm going to think about each individual action that I'm doing and go through mm. that one at a time. Okay. Yeah. Take my hand off, put my hand on the next rung, grip the rung. Okay. Move my foot. Okay. Lifting it up next rung. And they go through this so fast and this ideology that they do in the Navy SEALs, they essentially drive it into only thinking about the next action that you're doing, not about, oh, I need to get to the top of this or, oh, I don't want to fall or any of these things. None of that matters. Mm -hmm. You put it out of your mind. And the only thing that matters is the individual next action that you're doing. And it's essentially you practice that enough and you get through the neuroplasticity stage of like your brain starts to shift and think about that way in general. It becomes impossible for you to consider not being able to do at least one thing. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. I might have to go ahead and become a Navy SEAL, guys. You know, Dude, you can do it. David should, Groggins is shit, man. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Yeah. Uh, hey. Right. I believe in you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eric, how you been doing, man? Man, it's it's been a week. Uh, like work work lately has been pretty rough. So I've been uh, I've just been working way too much. So it's nice to have a breather and talk about games and whiskey for a little bit. Okay. But okay. But yeah, I you know there hasn't been too much that happened. I will say a huge congrats to uh, some of the students at my judo club uh, we had one girl actually make uh youth worlds i think she's going to be fighting in brazil she was Let's the go she won the uh, um the national tournament she got first place so she's qualified and so she's going to be doing a world level tournament and traveling to brazil i think for it and i Woo. that's coming up in just a few weeks Heck yeah, dude. So that was awesome. We went and actually helped out, lift all the mats, man. These, it's just crazy the scale of equipment for relatively small events, right? So you're putting on this judo tournament and they have six mats. And when you get to that scale, you don't want to do uh, blocks, right? Like sometimes you have the interlocking blocks that work like jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. And you put them down one by one, right? And those so for our local tournaments, we actually use those. We have some two inch thick ones that we just carry around and put them on a, a truck. It's like forever. Horrid. But <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a long time to put up and it takes a long time to put away. But when you get to the scale of like six mats, with a good deal of space in between, they switch over to these large rolling tatami mats. Mm. So you roll out an entire section. The sections are about four feet long, or uh, let's see, they're taller than me actually. So they're about six feet long and they go across probably 40 feet. Or something. Wow. Like that. 20, 20 to 40 feet. No, yeah, you're like, that's heavy and as hell. You're exactly right. That's what we used to use when I did martial arts in college. And the worst thing was uh, so we also had bobs, which are body opponent bags. So they're freestanding Ooh. opponents to deal with. Yep. Well, one year those disappeared over the summer. And the next year, all of the mats disappeared over the summer. So the students oh, had nothing dude. to hit and they had to now practice on wood floor which is actually like worse than practicing worst. on like concrete because it hits back mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's 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 it yeah. bends with it and then snaps back yeah we're, oh, we're pretty sure gosh. that the uh football team like saw how cool that stuff was and they're like we want that and took it and took it because uh, whatever the football team wants they hide? get how do you hide that because they have a giant facility dude yeah. When, when they're rolled they up, it when they're higher. rolled up, they're like four to six feet in diameter. They're not, they're not huge. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, we're, we were rolling these things up. It took us about an hour and 45 minutes to roll all wow. of these things How up. How many did y'all have? Okay. Uh, I think, let's see. 
let's see, there were we got really 40 on that. one and 40 on another. So there were about 80. That is an insane of number of maps. Wow. That is an insane That's a lot it, of maps. It filled two uh, basketball courts. Full semis. What the shit? Yo, did you guys have yeah. to lift it off the ground into the semis? Yeah. The semi didn't have a lift put gate. In. Oh, no, 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 no. So we were at the convention center. So it, uh, we had to lift them to get them onto the semi, okay. but we didn't have to like step up onto the semi. It was a bay. You, yeah, uh, the convention okay. centers have okay. the loading docks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the semi pulls all the way up, yeah. and you just have to walk across. So we still had to lift them mm. up, but like not Must to huge lift event. them up. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Youth Nationals is what it was. It was huge. They had it was a two day tournament. Mm. That, um, oh, um. That reminds me. So I just started watching Physical 100. Yeah, I was going to bring season. that up. Mm. The first one season? Uh, you, you brought up the first, the second season. You're on the second season. The second season. I'm on the me second too. season. Okay. And okay. Uh, they just recently started doing the um, the challenge, the ball challenge. And the wrestle it? Yeah, yeah okay. To, to go ahead and hold it for three yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm right? on that too. Um, and the reason why I brought it up, and this might be spoilers for you, Anthony. It might be spoilers. Well, I'm on like, really I think the like second the episode of it. It's t it's so early in the game, yeah. in the uh, show that really no yeah it's no big deal permanent. yeah um, there is a woman on there's a woman on man match that's crazy that's not really uh, yes topical. that's just nuts. know that there's a woman on man match that's awesome and then there's a woman on woman match to go ahead and hold the oh, ball yeah. and w Jeez. one of the women is a taekwondo like gold medalist right. Yeah. And she picks this girl because she's shorter than her. They're both tiny. And she's like, oh, like 151 she's shorter, shorter centimeters. This will be I mean, fine. millimeters. I mean, It'll meters. Be, I mean, exactly. centimeters. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> your ADHD went, wow. <laughs> Freaking R2D2. Oh, God. I just said the, I said the uh, first number and I was like, wait, isn't that like this? <laughs> <laughs> He went anyway. So uh, she picks this girl who's shorter than her, and she doesn't find out that like she's like she, it's not a she's not a bodybuilder. And she's not a, she's not a weightlifter. She is an Olympic weightlifter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she this is girl, compact and she is strong as heck. Can, oh my god! Her big three is, like, I think, like three hundred and thirty kilograms. She can lift one hundred and thirty-five yeah. kilogram oh, deadlift, one hundred and thirty-five kilogram She's, squat. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the other her, thing is. She, her, she That's is, insane. She That's, is literally the definition of Mighty Mouse, and I was like, Jeez. you picked the wrong one. Like, I understand you have technique, but. This is a game of strength. You picked the wrong Dude, one. <laughs> she deadlifted that girl so many times and just like threw her. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I was like, this is insane. I think the only thing that saved her was the fact that the girl had Taekwondo technique. So like she was able to kind of like worm around. We got, it was but, uh, so close. It was so close, but it went to like double overtime. Yeah. And eventually the, the power lifter, the Olympic power lifter won. And I was like, damn right. That's right. Give me that ball. I said that so many times. I said that so many times in the show. <laughs> Give me that ball. And the biggest thing about the, the the big match that the other one that Nat mentioned, the girl versus the dude, is that the girl oh. picked the dude. Yeah. Oh, dude, the MMA girl. Yes. Oh man. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. So so wait, is this is this season better than the this, first season? I think. Oh so. yeah, especially I because so. the okay. first like uh, get your ranking mission was way more reasonable like gotcha anthony more reasonable the, the in the first season they had to hang which hang. is like yeah unless you're a I'm five sorry. foot tall girl you have like no chance oh, or gymnast fair. you know what i mean the gymnast won right yeah a the gymnast, gymnast won. won yeah so it was just it yeah. was just everybody doing something that everybody is able to be kind good of at able to do you know what i mean yeah. was i thought that yeah. was pretty neat i no spoilers for yeah it, like, now i haven't seen the second season yet yeah, yeah, yeah i can't yeah. wait to see what else i am sad mm -hmm. oh You're i am sad. sad about the first season how they did my guy dirty oh, the i at the end the very end yes yeah, dude oh Absolute my god chu sung hoon was Absolute killing it like the, the 40 entire or 50 -year -old guy? season the mma guy 
That was the yeah the 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 MMA dude. His nickname is Sexy Yama, by the way. Dude, he's a badass. He's a beast. <laughs> he does he does uh, MMA. He's done m- multiple martial arts. He did like judo growing up. He did all of these things. He is a beast, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he was ki- he killed every single competition. Oh, every man. single one, he just killed it and killed it yeah. until they got to one where only the strong men won, who were like. 400 300 pounds or whatever yeah you know and it's like at the end it Mm -hmm. just turned into who's who's strong enough who's strong it's a strong it's a it's a Uh, who can lift the most when they were moving the when they were moving the object yeah oh yeah Yeah. no that it wasn't who's stronger it's who's bigger the guy that won yeah is weighs the most and has good mm -hmm. legs yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was a very oh. bad last competition. It was, it was, yeah, it was terrible. so annoying because and I you, feel like it was rigged, any other. Right? It was really? rigged. Yeah, yeah, it was rigged. They what? had them. They had the person who they did my guy dirty won three times. Like he was winning the first time that they did it. There was a malfunction with the le- with the pulley, so they reset reset again. The second time there was another malfunction. He was still winning at that point in time, so they reset it again. And by the third time, he was gassed, and so then the other person won. Dude. That's why whenever you watch the video, he goes from like killing it to exhausted, like like that. Hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's in the, so it's annoying. in the uh, if you watch if you read any of like the news articles about it, it's like. It's damning for the entire series. Man, that's but they, so annoying to me. Coming into this new season, though, there's a there's a guy in judo that you might know who shows oh, up, right? and he. Oh yeah, Anthony, have you gotten to that part the yet? The judo guy was nuts. The judo guy is nuts. Dude. It's it's so hey. cool. And he's <laughs> and also judo, like in his judo 40s, guys are both different. Man. He's he's in his forties, yeah. dude. It's insane. Like he's all wrapped up in tape too. So I'm like, dude, dude like what's wrong? Like what are you judo are guys you be built here? different, man? But he, judo guys be built. Oh, different. he comes oh, in. It, it's and, so good though because Anthony, he it's so good. He faced a karate guy, and the karate guy was so, the karate guy picked him. Yeah. And, yeah. and he, it was like, bro, you made a mistake. Bad, bad, bad mistake right there. Not the guy. Like, Not the guy. <laughs> the, Not the, the guy. The because, problem, but he did it because he he was a fan. He chose him because he was oh, a fan. He, was like, yeah. he knew who he was. And he was like, dude, I would love to like put time in the ring with you. Yeah. Because this is my only chance I'm going to have. Because you're that level of a legend in my circle. Man. So I was like, props. You had to do it. Of course. I don't, so I don't, Eric. I don't think a lot of people understand like judo, judo is different in a lot of ways, but as a competition, you have so many people that get into these fights or get into these physical tests of merit. Mm-hmm. And if you're in like a street fight, oftentimes it's a stronger guy that wins. Yeah. But when you start competing in judo, judo rules force you to do perfect technique. Mm -hmm. essentially Mm -hmm. right you have to do things in pretty much the perfect way and a lot of people don't understand the level of absolute aggression without trying to actually kill the other person right like in a judo competition you're not trying to kill the other person you're not trying to maim them or anything like that Mm -hmm. but what you do have to do is go against them at their full strength and wanting nothing them. more than not to get thrown mm. and you have to go and throw them. Dude, what was mm. And here's the thing, when you translate that to an actual fight type of thing, people it's don't understand. Go, go look at guys in the MMA that have judo uh, black backgrounds ver- yeah. or backgrounds versus other fighters. They wreck everybody else because People aren't prepared for somebody who can't has that level of aggression, but also has the ability to do perfect techniques mm. under that level of aggression. A lot of people just go out there swinging and maybe they'll get lucky and get a stray blow, or maybe they'll have like good enough strength, whatnot. But a judo guy, you know, like they, they are built different. 
They are built different. Just, there, there was a manga I read that was like it covered uh, a. Per, there was a kid who just like fell into fighting, doing street fighting, and he got um, really good at it. But over time, like just other people started showing up on the on in his area on his street and fighting him. And I remember the time that the a judo guy showed up on his street, and they were like judo in the streets is one of the most lethal martial arts that you could ever uh, levy against a person. In fact, it is prob- it probably should be illegal to practice on the streets because you will kill somebody or break something if you no. toss somebody like this in the streets. Like you're going to like th- there's just so many cases for you to either have a concussion, break an arm, break a rib, anything just because of how hard and how fast it happens. Dude, do you remember the one where the uh, the MMA fighter picked like the only black dude that was like gigantic and super ripped? Pissed me. <laughs> he Made was me mad. He did so oh, well. Man. He's so strong. Dude, so strong. When that match oh, ended, I looked at my wife and I said, "You know why you don't see black guys in the UFC? Because they would kill everybody and they just win." <laughs> <laughs> you do you see black people in the UFC? John uh, do, John Bo- Bones Jones. Some. There are like some, a yeah. major like <laughs> no no you see, you see him there and like uh, oftentimes they they'd do be, very well. yeah that's what I was like they'd they'd taking off their pants, <laughs> dude. That was that dude. that's still the funniest. I love that. What's his name? I uh, what's his name? I love I that remember. he makes a living now off of my balls were hot. That's so hilarious. <laughs> he was so Anthony. I don't know if you got to see this fighter, if you've seen this commercial, but he he's part of a um, a shaving commercial or something like that now. <laughs> but he after the UFC match, he just takes off his pants right after the match, and then Joe <laughs> Joe Rogan goes up and he's like, "Dude, congrats on the win. You d- you did all this awesome. I love the knockout that you gave." But why did you take your pants off? Sorry. He's like, my balls were hot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because Eric's impersonation of Hulk or not Hulk Hogan of Joe Rogan Joe is Joe Rogan. Trump's <laughs> voice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just, I just tried to make my voice different. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, that was good, uh, so good. Oh, to put a cap on this whole like recap of like the week and like stuff, think that's what yeah. we've seen. I am getting a tattoo on Saturday. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm getting Boji from Ranking of Boji. Kings. Okay. Yeah, that, that little guy got like stole my fucking heart, guys. Like nice. I don't I don't know what it is about that series. I don't know if anybody has watched it in this podcast. Eric, have you watched it, Anthony? I I don't know what this is. I have seen pieces of it. Yes. Okay. Is the Usama? They. they, they uh, ranking of Kings. So there is a there's a change of theme song into the second half of the series, and it's it slaps and it's and it's emotional and like it it I can't explain it fully because you have to know who Boji is and what he's going through and what his fa- like his entire family dynamic. It's it it it's the first anime that has almost made me cry as an adult, like as thirty. 32 33 year old man is this boji cried yeah it's boji yes. yeah. nice it's boji. so so That's essentially uh <laughs> and I'll, i i won't spoil anything but the the premise and idea is a guy who uh, uh Bo, boji mm-hmm. who's going through all these things mm-hmm. but he is deaf and super trusting and naive deaf and mute yeah, deaf and mute. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's not blind. super trusting and super naive. No, no, yeah. no, no. Deaf, mute, and then he's born to giant kin, but he's born super small. Yeah. Like, he, like ugh. guys, I don't want to get into it because I might get emotional by the middle of it. So Are you getting the tattoo? Let's keep on <laughs> moving, the guys. Tattoo? Huh? I'm going to get it here. Nice. Nice. And it's going to be like a representation of like a little bit of childhood because I feel like me when I was younger was a lot like Boji mm. in terms of not in terms of like his struggles and family, but a lot of how he was uh, interpreted by the people around him. So, yeah. Huh. Dude, well, nice. Be yeah, so one other cool yeah. thing that happened or not happened this week. So we ended up watching Aquaman on Friday and mm. we were like, holy shit we really need to not listen to other people because this was a really good movie. 
And everyone... Are you talking about the... Uh, wait, one, two, three? We watched Aquaman oh, 1 on two. Friday and Aquaman 2 on Saturday okay. because they were both really great. And... I thought they were good too. I yeah. think yeah. the only reason they got flack was because people take it too seriously. It's like, dude, this is like Finding Nemo adult. No, it was DC. Like it's dude. just it was DC. It's supposed to be serious. Like it's the same people who like who love Batman and say that DC is all about their villains. When in truth, it's it's about the ensemble. Yeah. Is it, yeah. it was so funny. It was so good. Let's be. I mean, t- yeah. to be fair, I would watch a movie on anybody doing a full character like breakdown of the Joker not in the way that Joaquin Phoenix did because that was good and terrifying, but not in the way that I wanted it to be, that. you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's, if they uh, could do, it, Oh, they could do the killing joke. Oh wow. my God. But that's, oh. yeah, that's the best one. Oh, but uh, I, I think that's, that's universally acclaimed as yeah. the best one. Right? Actually, I, yeah. if they could I drink uh, Jefferson's ocean during both, Aquaman one and two, so it's bourbon that's aged he's, in the he's ocean. Bourbon need to be <laughs> that's the same funny. as the ocean. You disgust me, but yeah, no, the, the, those movies were, were great. I haven't watched the second yeah. one, but the first one was really fun. I I agree. I I really I think the first one's fun. I think they're. I think they fall under the category where if you want to critique it and drive a nail in the coffin there are there are threads that allow you to do so but at the same time to try and it doesn't it's not a critique bury it it's, it's not worth it's, it it's a yeah, movie that it, shouldn't really be critiqued it's kind of like pacific rim where it's like it's not trying to be some sort of masterpiece it is, it's yeah. just even though pacific playful rim, you know was a masterpiece. it was just but it had terrible reviews it had terrible <laughs> you know I'm what joking, i mean I'm joking. and like i looked at imdb and i was like why is Aquaman so low? This was really fun. This was really good. Like, I'm definitely yeah. going to be trying it this week. It was also like the Aquaman one had like the best ever uh, de aging of an actor that I've seen because it was who did de age? It de aged um, Anna, Anna Kid- Boba Fett. Anna Kidman, mm, yeah. mm. The actor that plays Boba okay. Fett. Yeah, and they did such a good job that you didn't even know it, and you've seen it. You can yeah. Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Is he the brother? He's the dad. The dad was yeah, de-aged. Dad. Oh, yeah. Impressed. Right. Okay. It was pretty. Da- I was like, okay. wow. I'll no take one it. Kenny Valley or okay. anything. It was nuts. Hmm. Eric, what are we drinking tonight? So we're like I said at the beginning, we're on our way back to Australia. And with that, we are back to another product of the Star Wars. Now, last time, mm-hmm. we tried a Star Wars product. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that we thought it was bad. It didn't do too hot, though, did it there, bud? But it was, it was underwhelming, mm. to, say, to say the least. Mm-hmm. So... And I think that may have to do with the single malt. So it'll be interesting to know whether or not this single malt does a little bit different, right? (laughs) Not better, but different. Okay. Well, I say different and not better because I would rather see whether or not there are single malts that y'all enjoy versus Mm. single malts are just bad to y'all, right? So... For example, if you're like, oh, these are interesting flavors, they, I just need more or less or that, then we have something to work with, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's like, hey, these are these single malts, I didn't like them for the same reason. Then it's a single malt issue. Then it could be yeah. a single malt issue. Now, the, the different thing here for the Solera compared to, compared to the Nova, which is what we tried last time, is... So while Eric's looking that up, I wanted to say that um, this is really good timing because this weekend I am attending a black belt test for our first ever Australian candidate to become a black belt. Oh wow! So, excellent. Good timing. Wow, that's like perfect. Right? <laughs> yeah. So. 
That's pretty crazy. Sick. Let's go. Hopefully they uh, pass because you know they've got they're driving a driving. <laughs> they're driving a long way across the ocean to get here. God forbid. It's pretty rare. Like most of the time, when someone tests, they like they're ready, and mm -hmm. essentially the the instructors and stuff often know that like they're gonna pass before they go, because um, it's yeah. kind of like a quality, a mindset and stuff like that. But before I got my black belt, I watched one test where someone came from out of state because she, I guess, maybe graduated school and moved away. And man, she uh, she did not pass. And that was tragic. Oof. Oof. And, uh, I might have she might actually not tragic. passed twice in a row. It was really rough. Man. Yeah, that is rough. Man, on the nose. This smells so good. Am I the only one? Um, this is very reminiscent oh. of the, um, the red wine cask. Uh, I forget what it was called. It's yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Like, cause I remember it being very attractive off the Yeah. Nose. I think I'm getting, yeah, like, I, I definitely I get fig. figs get and prunes, yeah. like darker mm. dried fruits type of deal. I get that a hundred percent. hundred percent. Now this is actually their first whiskey. So this was oh. their original. It's their flagship. Yeah, this is their flagship. It was the first whiskey where they borrowed from tradition and then started asking questions. And so they, they have on the nose, they're saying, hey, this is a, we got some tropical notes. We got fr orchard fruits, caramel and vanilla which I get a lot of this, especially the orchard and tropical fruits, man. It is. You get the tropical? Yeah, I definitely... <laughs> almost like there is a hint of... Like pina colada, like a little okay. bit of pineapple yeah. with yeah, vanilla yeah. type of deal going on. Like an infused vanilla of some kind. Yes, exactly. It smells so good, I don't want to taste it. Yep. And it smells phenomenal. Yep. I will say this may be the best smelling whiskey we've tried on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. So uh before we do I though, you ready? know what yeah. uh to hell on earth or purgatory or uh oh, yeah. the earth's bum hole or no, to, to spreading democracy. <laughs> to spreading democracy liberty. freedom. <laughs> liberty liberty <laughs> for super uh, earth. Get rid of those automatons, boys. Mm. Wow. I'll go ahead off the cusp. That is infinitely better that than their last so one. That is so much better. That is so much better. Man, we should have started with wow. this one. Yeah. For the creek, guys. For the creek. The creek? This is a. For the creek. This is a phenomenal is. single malt whiskey. The Malevolon Creek, my guy. For the that creek. That sounds familiar. Well, never mind. We'll talk about it later. We're focusing on the whiskey right now, and this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. This tastes and great. So this is a great single malt. Uh, I'm really at a loss for for words here. Now, Solera, obviously, is a traditional method that the Spanish use to age their sherry and keep it consistent. And so with that, they are aging this single malt whiskey in ap apera barrels ap apera barrels it is an aussie fortified wine that is similar to sherry mm. did you say capoeira they typically no apera apera okay. i i don't exactly know how you pronounce that let's let's see it's, here it, there's apera? no l at the right, is it apera? At the right. No. No, 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 no no then it's apera Let's see. It is an Australian wine, and they don't have a way to pronounce it really easily. <laughs> he typed it into Google, and Google was like, "I ain't got nothing for you guys. I'm sorry." Yeah, it didn't it? Didn't help much. So this but, is the first time that I'm like picking up on so many of the things that are on this little booklet. That this is the most on point. Yeah. It's yeah. Instead of writing 100%. down my notes, I'm just starting to check off the images <laughs> that I yeah. taste. I'm yeah. like, it's smooth. Figs, yes. Prunes, yes. Almond, yes. It's very warm. 
There's oh my gosh, figs. Yeah. I get a little bit of that chocolate at the end at the on end. the aftertaste. Yeah. Oh, I see Absolutely. that. This is nuts. Why Man. can't all of them be? <laughs> like this is like Dude. this is one for one. Like this literally yeah. is the whiskey. Yeah, a yeah, hundred percent. That it, it has. It's the first time that I've ever that. had that experience, and it's like not too yeah. sweet that it's like, oh, this isn't even a whiskey anymore. Like sickly. It's not sickly. Yeah. I'm going to call it. They're going to have a tough time beating this whiskey in this advent calendar. Mm, yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What are there? 24? Wow. There are 24. But we're I only think. one sixth of the way through, wow. so this bodes well. Wow. Man, that is a great single malt whiskey. You get some of that those malted barley flavor notes towards mm -hmm. the tail end, but they kind of like come in and then go out. You beat, balance up, and then it's chocolate. And then it's like chocolate and a little bit of oaky warmth mm -hmm. right at the end. But yeah, you get a ton of fruity notes. This has a lot of citrusy fruit notes to it. Definitely, definitely. Is I that chocolate? Say, Are you holding up the chocolate? Holding up chocolate, yes. I am because I have my uh, my nosing kit right here, mm. which for once I don't need it, which is hilarious that I finally right. found it and brought it out. Yep. But uh, I was just confused that my green screen thing is keying out blue because that is a blue oh, label, not a green label, unless I'm completely colorblind. No, you're not completely colorblind. That's blue. Well, huh? you can see it. Yeah. Can't you see through it though? I can see that it's blue. Yeah, I can see through it. I can see through it, but it's also oh wait, no, never mind. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Out. I guess it's not blue. I don't but know. But it is blue, it is. I My promise. God. It's completely keyed and out. And then this is green. Oh, that's it's very keyed, keyed out. out. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Anyways. This is great. I will say this is fantastic. Um Damn. I'm a little worried. I'm not sure how to rate this. <laughs> I'm, I went first last I'm, time. I'm in danger. <laughs> mm. What else do you have on this one? Is that, did we get the full download oh. from you, Eric? Yeah, let me let me let me go back. I <laughs> Eric's was still Eric's on this game too. <laughs> and he's over here making out with it. He's just like, he's like, huh? I love you. I think I love you. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a great single malt, right? Oh yeah, here. I need to add um, this to the purchase list. Yeah, is, this is definitely going yeah. to the purchase list. Is, this, is I, the red breast a single malt? Uh, no, I don't so, think so the red breast is a single malt Irish whiskey. Oh, it is a single pot still, a single pot still Irish whiskey. Thank you, lads. Appreciate it. And yeah, I get a nice mm -hmm. dude. He nailed it. A fig cookie. Wow, mm -hmm. that's insane. Um, yeah, I'm it, very it's impressed with this. Very impressive. Very impressive overall. This is. I understand why. I know, this is a flagship. You know what? This definitely should be their flagship. I yeah, am so excited to try more Star Wars stuff now. The first one, the Nova, skip it. It's not worth your time. This is it. This is it. You need this to is... go straight to the Solera. Don't go to the, the Nova. Skip that whole episode. The episode, it just doesn't matter anymore. Mm -mm. This is the episode where Australian whiskey, I'm going to put an even larger kangaroo on the thumbnail of this one. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's just... Just point it out. Just... Dude, you got to put the one the that's last like got one? the big bicep. <laughs> yep, yep. You gotta have the ripped out one, yeah. but you gotta put them in a coat too. You gotta make them look classy because like okay. classy here Fair. too. Okay, so you make it look like you're arm wrestling the kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm in. I'll see. If, I'll see what I can do. Wait, I need the. I need the. I need the. You the clip uh, still. I need the clip here. Do some push ups. You gotta get the the striations a, a little higher. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't need this. He doesn't need to do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> They're already yeah. popping out. <laughs> just screaming at the yeah. just screaming at the kangaroo too. Just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh cool. man! Yeah, this is good. Let's yeah, just jump just into the ratings, guys. Because yeah, I think I think, I think we're we just go good. Yeah, I mean, just just for the audience, just. The <laughs>
Australia it's, has good whiskey, guys. Like, we fuck, I, out, I, I didn't know that, but now we do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, my God. Go check out Starward. Go check out their stuff. Um, man, that's a phenomenal single malt. Uh, that's Nat, so how, how how much would you pay for, you know, God's nectar? <laughs> I wouldn't call this God's nectar. We <laughs> no, it's pr- yeah, 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 yeah it, that's valid. <laughs> it's not that great, but I'd give this a six. Sorry, no <laughs> payment. Sorry, uh, I'm I'm already at like the ranking piece. I'm like, it doesn't matter what money it is, guys. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't. It. Price doesn't matter. Price doesn't matter. Money Nothing. is a construct of society. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I need to have it. I have the money. So credit cards are <laughs> infinite money. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just rewind my life all the way back to when I was twenty. Really? I'll be like. I'll deduct it from my taxes. It'll be fine. Yeah, I'll borrow from my four hundred one k. Borrow from my four hundred one k. Like, what do you want? Uh, what yeah. do you want? Anyway, um, I did that. I would uh. say that this. Is, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. Hey, man. Uh, I would say that this is a price. Um, I'd pay sixty for this. Sixty. Okay. I pay sixty for this, and I have a feeling it's like around there. If this is a flagship, I have a feeling it's like around sixty. And and what would you rate it? Uh, I'd give this a six, solid six. A solid six. I'd give this a solid six. This is better than your daily driver. It will treat you very well, and it tastes great, looks great, smells great. What do you want? Like, yeah. what do you want, Anthony? What are, what are you what are you paying for this whiskey? You know. I want a bottle. If you give me a specific number, I swear to God, I'm going to smack you through this computer. I already wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you give me like a thirty-four ninety-nine, like the last time we did this, I'm reaching through this computer. And I I'm wrote down, you. and I can show it to you. Okay. I would pay. I would pay, especially because I want the bottle. And if I had to, because I know this happens the sometimes. Pretty. One forty-two. You gave. You are getting slapped. <laughs> Anthony, Eric gives us this number. If it says 142, I'm a next time I see you, Eric's going to film it, and we're putting it on the podcast. And all the- I'm taxing oh. that. I'm t- cl- clip it. I'm clip taxing it. that ass. Oh, yeah. We can do the Mark Clip thing. I already did. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, all this reminds me of is when we were playing a video game like 10 years ago, and that's like, there's a fucking missile on the way to your house right now, Anthony. You're about to fucking die. You're dead. Get out of your fucking house. You're going to blow up in 10 seconds. I have launched it. Oh, my God. Oh, man. So what would you what would you what would you rate it? So one forty two you said? One hundred and forty two bucks. I don't want to spend that much on it. I want to spend like sixty or Mm seventy. But if I had to, I'd put one forty two into it and rarely ever touch it. (laughs) Mm -hmm, Because it's nice. I gave it a seven out of ten. Actually, a seven. Yeah, Yeah. that was my that was my gut feeling. Seven out of ten. I'm not sure why, but that's where it's at. Yeah. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, am I subtracting some? I mean, it's 43%, which isn't super strong. It doesn't have to be super strong, but like, I'd be more impressed if it was stronger and still was able to do all this. But I have a feeling that it has to be watered down enough for you to pick this stuff up, maybe? It is really impressive, um, but also like we've had those, yeah. you know, what is it? Um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, like every flavor, like meal in a, in a chewable where you drink it and it every changes flavor. flavors yeah. over time. Like, yeah, it, it doesn't do that. Everlasting flavor. Gum yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I did watch uh, Wonka the other weekend, and that was great. That was great. I heard it's fantastic. It's so I've only good. watched like a third through Dude. one and it looks it's really nice it's a great like, musical I'm very surprised it was so good i was not expecting the musical <laughs> me neither from timothy chalamet muadib yeah uh quetzal Kadarak, uh lisa Nagai. yeah 
Dude. The man himself. I don't know if yeah. you guys Nor. have seen part two yet. No. But I'm so sad. May your blade may your blade chip and shatter, Damn. my friends. That is my dude. Like he can show up in whatever he wants from here on out. I've seen him scream in a uh in a uh in a I guess Arabic adjacent oh, yeah. language at a group of people and it <laughs> did something to me. It changed. Like, oh, so good. Perspectives so were good. shifted. So good. Anyway, we're back. <laughs> yeah, man. This is Eric. a phenomenal single malt whiskey. I think I think it's unfortunate that most people that probably really like single malt whiskey might not like this whiskey. Mm. But if you're coming from the bourbon mm-hmm. end standpoint, of mm-hmm. yeah, if you're on that end of the spectrum, you're, you're probably going to love this, man. It, it's freaking fantastic and for me there were two things about this whiskey that are probably up in the rating a little bit one is those citrusy fruit notes at the beginning which Mm -hmm. transition through a single malt flavor down into chocolate Mm -hmm. decadent those yeah it it tastes almost like a chocolate like Mm -hmm. one of the things that you'd get from like one of those nice chocolate sp- places where you go in and they're like, my chocolate tastes like fucking oranges. Like it, it, it's like some baffling craziness that they say their chocolate tastes like. And this does that same type of thing. And it's really, really good at it. It's drinkable too. 42%? Yeah, 42%. 43. This is a nice, easy 43. Yeah, I, I nice, said easy drinker. I off it. Yeah. I think this is also a great introductory whiskey to single malt. This oh, yeah. solves Absolutely. This so many want. things. Yeah. If you were to give me this and say single malts start here and then go in different directions, I'd be more willing to pick up different single malts. And that that is exactly what this does. Mm-hmm. And with that, I really want to give it a 7.5. Wow. Yo. Hell yeah. yeah. I really enjoy this one. It has a lot of the flavors that I really enjoy. I think the only thing that's missing for me is, and funnily enough, I just had the E.H. Taylor, of course, was my side whiskey. Here. Mm. And the E.H. Taylor's better. Oh, no. Shut up. Shut up. Like, why would you do... Why Why do you have to be that... Why do you have to be that bratty person that I have to deal with today? <laughs> oh, man. Mr. I didn't pour out a bottle for you. Whatever. It's I'm going to buy you a bottle. Get I out. Know, I know. I know. It's okay. I love, so, I love you and the other one both. It's okay. Uh, the other one. <laughs> so, one of the things that the E.H. Taylor does is it infuses some of those interesting flavors mm-hmm. into peppery tasty heat so sometimes you have alcohol that goes in and it burns and it tastes terrible yeah sometimes you have alcohol that tastes good but then it's really hot and it kind of detracts from the flavor every now and then you get an alcohol where you try it and it has all these complex flavors and the heat has its own flavor that tastes good I feel like that's the only thing missing here. Kiko! I, Sorry. Kiko! Stole the show. <laughs> I really want to see a single barrel of this exact thing. That would be cool. Absolutely. Because I think with a tasty heat to it, a tasty... Tasty. Like, <laughs> like heat. Man. It'd be fantastic. Dude. Wow. And with that concludes our ASMR section. Oh my god. Of the you know, I'm not yeah. afraid to now mention that at one point I was playing with giving it a 7.7. 7. <laughs> really? Yeah, was, so I'm the low ball. You are. It seems. It's like the opposite of New Riff. Oh, yeah, by the way, since I'm going to see Eric soon, I can get him a sample of the New Riff bottled in Bond that you and I got. Mm-hmm. So we could do an episode of that soon. Did you yes. already open yours? New riff. Did you already open yours, Nat? 
Your new riff. My new your new riff? riff bottled in bond. You got it. Did you open it, Nat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not I'm like this one. I'm only giving him a hard time because every other whiskey it's not like this. he gets, he opens and drinks immediately. It's not like this is the wait, one from so the. Are you saying like wait? So the bottled in bond is the one that's uh, the store, the um, current one that you can get at pretty much any liquor store, right? I think so. You yeah, you I, ordered I, I it so. for delivery from. <laughs> Steel box. No, oh, did you steel mean Bach. the malted, the six-year malted rye? Yeah. Am I got? Am I getting it the wrong? The six-year malted rye bottled, bottled in bond. bond. It's, it's malted rye. Oh yeah. my bad. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, I haven't opened okay, it. Okay, sweet. Cool, cool. Well, we can do that yeah, soon. Yeah. Yeah. But we might be able to run to the store and get a malted rye while you're here too. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Dune, the bottle in bond I do <clears> not have. The bottle in bond is the one that I want. The, the barrel, it's the single barrel select that I have not been able to pick up because yeah. I haven't gotten paid yet. I got paid today though. So. Uh, uh, we'll see. Isn't that like you go? So speaking of of <laughs> Dune, Eric and I were talking about this the other day. Um, so what we were talking about is how, for some people, basically we were talking about anime and sub versus dub a little bit because I realized with my wife the other day we learned that we both are on the dyslexic spectrum which is yeah why we can't always find it easy to read subs you know unfortunately and so mm. like in that case it's it makes more sense for people that are dyslexic to just not have a great time doing that uh but then eric was sharing and i was sharing or i didn't share i was going to share today that we were watching Demon Slayer and there was a dub that was terrible and it and it wasn't a huge deal. Eric has a much better example of a really big deal, like a basically a sin. But in Demon Slayer in English uh spoiler warning, y'all are all cut up, right? Yeah. Bro. Well, I've read the whole manga, okay. so you Bro. can't So, <laughs> you know, freaking sister doesn't die to the sun. And then they say, thank goodness, like a hundred times. Everyone's going, thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. And it's just like, that is not how you speak English. No, nope, nope, that's not. <laughs> that's not how you speak English. <laughs> that's not right, man. And it was just unfortunate. I was like, I know this would be way better in Japanese, it, like way better. I know it. And then Eric, do you want to share what you experienced with Attack on Titan? The yeah. like, oof. so so I I've been watching a lot of Attack on Titan and been rewatching some of the parts in dub, mm -hmm. and uh, man, I that anime has moved up, I think, to number two on oh my, my list. God. Wow, you rewatched it and it cemented it further. Man, I. It, a phenomenal anime. Uh, mm. The manga is not as good as the anime, and I'm, yeah. I'm reading the manga now too. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not as good as the manga, uh, the anime. Yeah. But in the dub, there are multiple times now where the dub says things that spoil twists for the before sub. they for the happen. Side. Yeah. So they say that. like Annie and stuff like that before you know it's Annie. Oh, yeah. really? That's, yeah. That's they like say it. Unforgivable. Crazy shit, man. How? Dude, they, they, it's like terrible. And they, they do that multiple times. They, they talk about this type of thing. And it's just, it's weird. I'm going to have to hear multiple things because like. The Annie thing is huge, obviously, but it might have been a one-off. I I would have to have more details. You can give it to me later. That's fine. But yeah. to have a piece of the media be completely spoiled because of a mistranslation and a mis not not even a misperformance because it's not the actors in that in that moment it's the translators in taking yeah it to yeah because they're just reading a the script story. there's yeah. no way that you it's, get that across a, a board of like a, a, a group reading and people are like this doesn't this doesn't make sense they don't yeah. know yet so how would how would they know to say annie for this 
Dude, they do sense. it. They do it like twice too. Because on, the, for example, on the wall when Reiner and Bertholdt are, and, and spoiler for anybody who hasn't watched mm, Pack on Titan in like a decade, it's been like ten years. Yeah. Eat so it. when <laughs> when Reiner and Bertholdt are a uh, about to, to reveal everything they're they're not reiner before they decide to transform yeah says i've almost died multiple times and then he looks at armin and he says armin remember when annie tried to kill me oh uh, uh, uh. Does it wait? Does that happen in the sub? That doesn't. No, that def, doesn't, no. Doesn't, no doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't happen in the sub. sub. They he wow. says the female in Japanese. He says female Titan. Wow, <sighs> dude! How do you mess that multiple up? times? Multiple times. And here's here's the thing. On one hand, mm -hmm. I'm like, and I, I I told Anthony this the other day. I think if you go to the popular animes nowadays, you can pretty much go whichever like whichever is your preference is honestly fine. It's not like ten years ago when there were just things that happened in dubs that would be objectively worse. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't. They don't do that in newer animes anymore. Like if you go and watch, you know, Mob Psycho season three in English, you're going to be fine. Yeah, and. So it doesn't really matter too much anymore. And it's going to matter less and less as we go on because anime is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And you do have people in Attack on Titan, for example, Levi's played by Matt Mercer. Oh, and yeah. fucking everything he says is absolute gold. And, and this is where right? it's mad. This is where the Dune thing came into play. Because when Eric was saying this sort of thing, I was like, oh, yeah, it's just like how you wouldn't tell someone to go and just watch Harry Potter they have to read it first because when that shit came out i mean it wasn't i mean one and two are really good but three four and and then if you haven't read it you don't know what's happening it's complete disarray but then yeah. on the opposite end of the spectrum dune well it's either you or if it, you're dude. a big reader you tell it. them to read the book first if they're not a big reader tell them to watch the movie first either way they're yeah. gonna love it and maybe they'll go and do the other medium and do the right other afterwards medium. yeah yeah dune's a very different book than it is a movie to be oh fair. i've heard like insanely different yeah, <laughs> hmm, yeah it is the, insanely philo different. the philosophical boiler uh rooms that you end up in in that in that book um almost crazy. make it indecipherable like i there are, there were points whenever i was reading dune i was listening to it and n no flack against the voice actors because they were killing it but just like the, the oh. content itself i felt like sometimes i was dragging myself through it and even like whenever there were like high-end like action-esque scenes it almost read like it was a history mm. if that makes any sense so like there yeah. wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of like you're in this moment we're going through this right now it's more so, like it all felt like a retelling rather than like a, a first like a I see. a evocative uh story hmm. so yeah dude i could see not, that yeah. not to say that it's not a good book not to say that it's good yeah. not a good book I it's got, just I, it's, it's way different it's, it's way different, different. It, it's just did y'all ever read speaker for the dead before we get to speaker of the dead you and you have you watched the latest episode of Solo Leveling? Wait, yes. No, because I think I'm too behind because we've been watching it in English. I'm caught up. Oh, I'm caught Anthony, up, Anthony, dude. I just saw the one in, with the prisoners. Uh, you're Anthony. You oh, are man. in for a banger, dude, man. That banger. How did it, how did they animate that? So much better. So much better than the manga, man. Dude, so it was better. so fucking good. It was so good. It was oh, amazing. I wish I, I could react with you guys in real time in that. Because I was losing my shit. Mel dude, was in this chair I was beside too. me. And I was here. And I I was just making stupid faces. Because like she was. I know. Or something. But it I was, it like, was insane. 
insane. Dude, so I was just like, for uh, it, you just gave me a great oh, idea. Anthony, it's so good. It's so what if, good. What if someday like Apple Vision becomes like something that everybody owns? You know what I mean? And then we can like go to the movies <laughs> together. Together. And we're all sitting next to each other, and you can it's like coming. see each other's facial expressions as and whatnot. So, as soon as it's not four, five, grand right? Yeah, for me to have a few <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually like I don't know, palatable. I'm sure they're gonna do it. I mean, it's the pro it. version, right? There's got to be, yeah, you know, there, a non-pro. I, I don't care if they, I don't care if there's non-pro is like two grand. I'm not buying that. It'll, God, I think no. it'll come down. I think it'll come down. Yeah, it'll it'll come. Oh down. yeah, it, it'll oh, have to. It'll come. It's gonna have to become commonplace. I hope. I hope it'll replace our computers. Like our laptops, I mean, and I. That'd be cool. I think I hope so. That too. would be so I cool. I hope that too. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, dude. Have you all read Speaker for but the Dead? Speaker. Of speaker the of the Dead. I no, don't Speaker for it's the by Dead. By or- or- Orson uh, he, Scott. Oh, as well. the second book yeah. of the Ender. It's the, yeah. It's the. I don't Ender read anything from Orson Scott okay. anymore. You might you might want to look into. That. Oh, that's interesting. But but first off, yeah. Uh, it's the it is the book because um. Wow, I'm blinking on what we literally just said. What is the first? What is the movie? Ender's Dude. Game. Dune. Ender's Game is written as a prequel to Speaker oh. for the Dead. It's yes. not actually. It's not actually supposed to be. It's not supposed to be the, the, the good one. <laughs> and yeah, then but Speaker for the Dead is insanely <laughs> good. And uh, oh, it is. People like me have always been like, why didn't that have a movie? Well, the author refused to let it become a movie because he was like two things one most of the book occurs in people's minds where they are speaking to each other like telepathically basically he's like that is not something you can turn into film and two there is some horrible atrocities that are committed within the book and i do not want my name attached to that in a visual representation whatsoever like that would be terrible (laughs) i think he just coughed out there's been some terrible things that have been, I don't know, rendered before my eyes in full yeah. uh, 4K. So I I doubt that it was really just that. I have a feeling also the way that the movie was treated for Ender's Game did not do well enough for them to go ahead and warrant a big blockbuster for really? Speaker of the Dead. Hmm. Yeah. I thought Ender's it Game did, did well. really well, but I didn't really know. It did not. It didn't do that well. It didn't do well enough for them to go ahead and get the Peter Jackson treatment for Speaker for Speaker of the Dead. It only got a six point yeah, six. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember how much it made, but it I did not do that well. Yeah. Yeah. We would have heard about the it. The budget was would the other thing that is always the problem with sci fi movies or, or movies that require a lot of special effects mm-hmm. is that Budget the, is the budget is so much. Mm-hmm. For for example, what was it? The uh, the new Avatar movie cost so much to make that they had to they had to be the number one selling movie of all time just to make a profit. Mm-hmm. I remember the talk about it. and then and James Cameron said like it's not possible. I made it because I knew that I wanted to go ahead and state yeah. the story. I know I'm not going to yeah. make anything off of this. Yeah, he literally was like, I'm going to take the, the the brunt of this. Yeah. Like, money's coming out of my pocket because I'm not going to make money off of this movie. Because he, knew. It, it, he just didn't think it was going to be possible. Now, unfortunately, he was right. that, that movie did make a profit. Um, it did? Yeah, it broke box office records. It, it, it broke the records Way and then made money. It? Yeah, dude, Way of Water did. Uh, so it, I only it took made a while, but it made through. profit. I made dude, that movie's through. a movie is <sighs> that movie is just has so many things about it that are unfortunate because there are diamonds in the rough in that movie. Mm-hmm. I think there are parts of that movie that are really, really interesting and fun and are just beautiful. And like, it's just filled with so many pacing problems. I heard that the time make constraints it and everything make it a slog. Just, yeah, and it's one of it feels like it's missing things too. Mm-hmm. And it it it's the director's cut that he wanted to make was like eleven hours long or I was some about to nonsense. Say, it's like you set aside like two days and you can watch. Yeah, it. but at the same time, I think it both. 
it, it, we are at a point in media where I wish that more of our movies stopped being movies and started being TV shows. Oh, yeah. Dude, the amount of times that I've been like, man, I really wish that the book series that I loved would become like a a, a, a TV series. Like, I would love yeah. for somebody to go ahead and pick up Ep- the whole Porsche series and put it on HBO because it's dark, it's gritty, yeah. but it's but it's also still got that child kind of wonder to it and creepiness. I would, it would be, it would do awesome. Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. And not these wheel of time BS either, because I don't want you to change the books. Just give me a representation, man. Give me a representation that is enjoyable. Look at solo leveling. Pull me to the books. I've read the the manga. I just want to see it be awesome. We don't need new stuff. The fact that Hollywood and Netflix and all of these large companies think we need something to be different for it to be interesting and for us to watch it and spend our time on it. It's ego. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I I, I did not walk into a theater to watch Duke. No, let's not compare Dune because Villeneuve did an amazing job. I walked, yeah. I walked into Dune to watch Villeneuve do Dune. Yeah. That's that's separate. <laughs> yeah. It's different. Yeah. It's different. But I did not walk into Harry Potter one through eight because we had to do part one and part two. Uh, I didn't walk into those because I wanted to see the rendition of Harry, Harry Potter from whoever the director of the Harry Potter books uh, movies are. Because I don't know about you. I don't remember who did those, and frankly, I don't care. I came to go ahead and see a representation of the book. Yeah. So if you could give me Harry Potter at this current age, maybe update some of the character representations as well, because I have a feeling like we need a much more diverse cast for the, for it to be really like to for it to hit and for it to solidify. Put that thing on HBO. Yeah. H- HBO takes series. And kills them. They have a track history of it. Give it to them. Or better yet, if you really want to go ahead and like go to, for a niche market, go to Apple. They don't have anything yeah. that's really geared for kids right now. They may not be in the market for it. But if I was looking into rebooting Harry Potter and telling a full rendition of it and I needed the budget for it and I needed people who I knew could do it, I'd talk to P- Apple's people. Did um, y'all watch Percy Jackson yet? The show? I, I haven't been it. able to. Yeah. Did y'all read the book? I yeah. want to. Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. So I heard it's a pretty good fair representation. Yeah, too. when we were watching it, and Ash is a huge fan, right? So if anything was bad, she would have been like, I hate this. But um, mm-hmm. most of it was like one to one. And then there were some scenes where we're like, did that happen in the book? That's and we're like, we think that yeah. was different. But that was really good. I really liked that. Like that was. Yeah. That yeah. was cool, you know, and so mm-hmm. they did a great job of doing something not how it was in the book, but mm-hmm. equally as awesome and didn't bother us. There are so many book series, I and I feel like there have been so many uh, books that have been made into movies now that I feel like a lot of people have gotten gun shy about picking up a series Sorry, picking up a book series and making it into anything else because they're hit and miss. You don't have a lot of big success stories when it comes to books. You have Lord of the Rings, you have Harry Potter, and you have Dune. Um, and I can't really think of anything else that pops up to my head. What? Unless you. What was that now? Uh, a huge flop, uh, Twilight. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Book that oh, went to a movie that, that was like really popular. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a series, though. I'm talking about yeah. movies. I'm oh, okay. More okay. so movies, because the series, like, yeah. I can see why some people are a little yeah. bit gun shy, especially how Game of Thrones ended. Um, that was a mistreatment of the of the producers and oh, that staff. Yeah. That was ridiculous. Well, weren't the, I, yeah, that the was actors dumb. were pissed. Everybody was so around that thing was just mad. Yeah. Like, so I understand why that didn't do well. Right. But what I feel like should have happened for this new day and age is that there are so many people who are writing books now and coming out with series that have a have a pretty decent following of people who are reading and continuing to reread and suggest to other people and if you want to incentivize people to read in this day and age you have to have a way to represent it visually they're not going to go to the they're not going to go to the books because the 
our education system has not incentivized that for them. But there is there's so there's a wealth of opportunity of bringing that to a continual series on any streaming platform for God anything really and making like a killing. Like I would, I would love to see. Oh man, I, I wouldn't even say like any educational text because honestly, I feel like anything that's educational text at this point in time. Like, don't ask me to read Wuthering Heights. I don't care. Eat, eat it. I don't care. No, it's not entertaining for me. Sorry. Yeah. But take, I don't know. Uh, the what's a book? Let me look at my bookshelf. Hold on. <laughs> Let me let me look at this. Let me look at this thing real quick. The Jim Butcher series and do it some justice. Oh, indeed, yeah. Because I can't believe they. Oh God, don't watch it. Um, I want to see the opening scene of The Way of Kings. Dude. Oh. With all I the mean, lashings. If, if, look, dude, look, it'd be so cool. Look, so if there's cool. anything that will, that could compete with the success of Game of Thrones. It's Way of Kings. Yeah. It's the it, entire Codex Alera. Oh, yeah. The Codex Alera is great. The Codex Alera would slap. Dude, People it would, would be slap. like, wait, it's Star Wars, but like with Game of Thrones under ties of politics. And, and then just, throw and, in the and, Avatar. And throw in the Avatar. Like, like and, and there's tribes of people that come in and out of the entire speech. Dude, we're, we're at season dope. three level of Game of Thrones, but Dude, at yeah. season one, like, Dude, what, it's do you, crazy. what do you crazy. want? But Axelair is amazing. But I get that that doesn't make money off the top. People don't know about these series and yeah. don't know like the the gravity that they could put into it. It's a lot yeah. of investiture of funny money. It's a lot of investiture of faith, and we don't have a lot of the latter to go along mm-hmm. with the people who have the former. Brandon Sanderson's going to be the one. I mean, he's printing money he's essentially. The goat, man, he's yeah. the goat. He's got the top selling like the the what Kickstarter the four like, top selling books of all time or some nonsense. What, what do you want from the man? His Other. Kickstarters are the most successful Kickstarters. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I and I, I here's the only thing that I would say. Mm. I look at the lashings and I think about them in my head and I want the Levi chase scene. Oh, dude, you'd have it. You'd have it. I don't know that Hollywood can do it that good enough. But no, but by the time they get to book four and it's Kaladin versus the the high lasher uh, commander that he's facing, yeah. that's when you have that Levi scene, and that's when oh, the money's man. there because then then people that's true. Are, oh, that's true. People I just, are like, oh, Kaladin's th- throwing the fuck down. I my thing is, I just don't know if Hollywood can do a scene would. like that. They could eventually. I don't think Hollywood could, but I think a streaming service could. Maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe. Because the, the dynamic the, camera movement is dude, just Dude, that was one of the best parts of Aquaman. Was like my favorite yeah. my favorite scene of Aquaman one and two is in the like first five or ten minutes of Aquaman one and the wife is fighting and they do an insanely cool camera move. They, and they do several other really cool camera moves yeah. in the choreography. That is a cool scene. Like that is a cool scene. But man, the 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 Levi sequence is it's it's peak. Now that yeah, I, I, I mean, feel like for peak. for me when I saw it, it, I was like, oh, I have to catch up to Attack on Titan because I, now I've seen that and I need to know how the fight with Kenny. It's what looks four insane. minutes. It took three months of work for Dude. for one tenth of the episode, essentially. Any of Levi's scenes, I'm always like, I'm sure the animators were just terrified. Whenever they knew that they were getting up to a point where they had to animate a Levi scene, because like it's it's Kenny, yeah, it's it's the Beast Titan, it's pretty much every single fight he's in, he's he's going over to the top, and they're and they're and they're showing it because like they're like no, this is the dude, this is him, like it's not a question. It's Which, Mikasa and Levi, it's a top, yeah, dude, that's it. Which, by the way, if, if you haven't seen the Levi scene, don't spoil yourself. But if you have seen the Levi scene or you've seen Attack on Titan, go watch Corridor Crew's breakdown of that scene and we, why it is possibly maybe not the... 
Uh, yeah, the, I think they're. I I think the corridor crew has the best uh, audience retention for explaining why that scene is okay, the fair. is the yeah. best. Yeah. It may not be the most. You know, I wouldn't subscribe. Uh, I'd watch like, the description. I would well, not third. subscribe. I used to. I would. I, would I used to really enjoy Quarter Crew, but I have not enjoyed them at all recently. I only like uh, Ren. Uh, do you no. do you know what happened with the whole like oh, what happened AI thing? Oh yeah, they they did an AI video. Yeah, I know there was a lot of stuff about it. So they put out an AI thing and they basically shat on a bunch of on animators and the work that they do through, uh-huh. so, through inadvertently through what th- the things that they said and it caused an entire shitstorm. Like the things that they were saying, I was like, did. dude, you can't say this about this technology and then completely devalue the artists who are doing it in real time right now. The reason why you're able yeah. to do that is because somebody has already created it. What you're talking about is basically assuming that a machine can replace what people can do right now it's one it's not true and two it's it's kind of insulting to the people who do it every single day because i don't know about you but i watched the blu-ray version of maharaga versus sukuna recently i don't see no i don't see an ai doing that anytime soon yeah i think when you start to add in what feels good versus what is just the art depicting a situation. AI is still so far away so, mm-hmm. from creating things that have feeling. Mm-hmm. And that the Levi scene is a great example of that too. You, you feel it. You feel the momentum, the weight yeah. to it. Yeah. The, the, the reflections in the windows that they didn't even have to draw. Like there was no point to they do did. it, but they did. <laughs> right. Like, like there are so many things about that scene that are just uh, make it arguably one of the best scenes in anime. Mm. Mm, top ten. I mean, you're you're kind of yeah, hitting the nail ten. on the head. The thing is, when someone's drawing, when someone's singing, when someone's filming a movie, they aren't just trying to convey a story or a picture or something like that. They are trying to make you feel how they feel, something. what they th- yeah. want you to yeah. feel. And you're not programming the AI to create feeling. You're programming it to mimic and to reproduce. Like it can't even it can't even fully synthesize on its own from a creative standpoint. Like you can't just say, "Hey, create something," and it goes. Yeah. And it makes something that's like evocative. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we have a long way to go. I don't appreciate Weird. what Cordo Cruz said in their videos about how this how this technology could replace animators. When in truth. The AI does not exist without the animators. Yeah. It doesn't exist without the artists. It doesn't yeah. exist without the people who put blood, sweat, and tears. Into it's also a it. huge mistake to think that AI will replace any job because we, if we keep saying that, we're training an entire generation to not to go not do and learn certain jobs. Uh, and then, mm-hmm. oh, at some point we find out that the AI didn't replace it. Now we have a huge shortage of people that know how to do this thing. That's how you get a job shortage. Yeah, and you have yeah. a huge have a huge skill gap. Yeah, and that's how yeah. it all gets deferred. That's how we expo- import all of the talents that we were forcing our kids to not learn from overseas. We're in the situation now. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, off the soapbox. Oh. Well, now that we have discussed AI shows, we've gone on a tire. Dude, right wait. We, there's, we have. There's one more show that I think I keep forgetting to bring up. Have I brought up oh, Dick okay. Turpin, the completely made-up adventures of Dick Turpin? I've heard about it, but I haven't watched it. Yeah. You told me about I feel, this before. Yeah, I feel like you have. I don't know the if it was on the British podcast. Great British Baking Show guy, not. Noel. You did. You did bring this up. About this. All right, y'all got to watch okay. it. It's fucking great. Okay. Monty okay. Python yeah. and the Holy Grail reincarnate. Okay. It's so good. Okay. Oh, okay. I like it's that. It's so good. Okay. I love Monty Python. I'm in. So good. I'm not a big fan, but it, okay, I'll give it a shot. Man, you didn't love when they got arrested at the end of the movie. That sh- it's so yeah. good. It's so good. It's so good. I feel like a lot of a lot of my taste in movies was kind of dictated by where I was growing up in suburban uh, Texas. So I had a lot of mm, 
I had a lot of decisions pretty much made for me in terms of like what my taste needed to be for me to be able to hang out with the people I was hanging out with. So they were like, oh, yeah, we like Monty Python. I was like, what's Monty Python? And like I saw like a clip or two of Monty Python. And it was like, yeah, this is funny, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It just never. I, I haven't given it the time for me to like. I guess yeah. uh, gravitate towards it. So are we talking so about. Are we talking about games? Been, games? Yeah, games? I was about to ask you. What have What have you been playing, Nat? Can I go? Can I go first? Because nothing has happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go for it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so broken. <laughs> all I play is all I play is Hell Divers too. When I get the chance. Uh. Yeah, I don't, very I good. Really I mean, don't play anything. it's so good. Great game. Yeah. yeah, I wish I could no, at the wait. moment, but yeah. Hmm? I have a complaint. Oh. I have not had a lot of time this these past few weeks for, for a game. So I like really sit down and be able to play it. And right. when I have, I'm like, I want to I wanna play Helldivers too. Yeah. And for the past two weeks or so. Uh-huh. Every single time I'm like, oh, this is it. I want to play Helldivers 2. I go to Steam. It loads. My beautiful library stands before me like the tomes of old. And Helldivers 2 sits at the top like the holy grail that it is. And I click on it and I click play. And it says, no, we're going to download an update. Yes. And then it takes... Two plus hours. Yes. For 30 gigabytes. Oh, that's a lot. And you know what they do? I go, I only have two hours. <laughs> and so I don't get to play Helldivers 2. But I say, oh, no, I am going to install this update. Because you know what? Tomorrow, I'm going to get on and I'm going to play some Helldivers. Mm -hmm. And I go, work, mm -hmm. life happened. Next day, I go in, Steam. Bleep. And then I, I see Helldivers. I'm on a mission. I click Helldivers. I click play. And it says, there's a new update. And I'm like, yeah. what, the, what do you mean? There's a new update. And then it says, it'll only take two hours. Eric, and I'm like, you have automatic updates turned on. I do, 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 This is the problem I do. It's when I open Steam. It takes. F so just leave Steam on. V valid. But I don't. I say let it install overnight, but you don't sleep. So. <laughs> I mean, oh this my all gosh. just sounds like alien talk right now. Now, now <laughs> I I wouldn't be so upset about this, except that it's happened like the six or seven times the past two weeks that I have wanted to play Helldivers two. Mm -hmm. I have not been able to play Helldivers two because it's been installing updates. It checks out because they're doing out. patches like every other day and they every need time. To. Eric, I look. I ain't too. hating on it. I'm just. Dude, I have been un unable to play Helldivers. Now I think it was my arc thrower that crashed the game for us. It is. You heard? It yeah. It, I was I using it, it the entire like, time. You garbage. You garbage truck. Dude, yes, I was absolutely. using it for hours, <laughs> and then suddenly at the very end, it crashed uh, us. We were on a we were on a mission where we like we were like right at the end and it was it, the uh, hardest he mission. Had just load, he he loaded in. We had like maybe two reinforcements the, left. We had, we gave up on getting all the rest of the uh, objectives and we were just like, you know what? Just like we need to get off this map. We had like a ton of resources and somebody just popped off one too many uh arcs off into the ether, crashed the sad. game. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go cry. And my uncle was on, too. I think it, was it was so a, great. Yeah, Tony was, was there. He, yeah. it, was it, was two it was it was a game of two Tonys. And uh, <laughs> it was it was it was not pleasant to have what, like almost an hour worth of time to be just completely dumped. So they do need oh. those updates because the game is buggy right now, which is unfortunate. Oh, yeah. I think what is it? Thor talked about it in, in terms of like, do I love this game? Yes. What I suggested to somebody no, not yet. Uh, because eventually, the game is going to catch up to itself. At this point oh, in time, yeah. that's every game. The current loop is fun because we haven't hit a point where it's like not novel anymore. Yeah. But whenever we get to a point where it's like, okay, yeah, I can drop a five, I, I can drop a five hundred kg right now, but 
after it's gone, I'm getting chased by 50 plus insects and I'm going to have to run around the same mountain for two or three minutes until my cooldowns come up and I can possibly breathe. And that's if there isn't a stalker chasing me down and basically outrunning me at my own game. So like it's, I know that eventually we're going to get to a point where they're going to release even more stuff. Cause I know Illuminate's coming. I know that weapon attachments are coming. I know that they're, they're going to add different worlds. So they have a slew of stuff that they're trying to add. Yeah. And I know it's going to eventually be awesome still. They're gonna just going to continue this momentum, but they need to do these patches for to to retain the people who the momentum that they have right now because I don't think they ever pictured this doing this. They did well. not. No, I think they've like even if you said play it. the first. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So like you play if you play the first one, you're like, okay, this is fun, but like, how did this become Helldivers too? Dude, I just really hope that someday, maybe soon, there's like an insane thing that happens and we are fighting on super earth oh, like we're happen. we're dying we're oh, about to sure. lose for sure that would be sick for sure I'm they're gonna not. do some type of event where that's the case where they're like they do, they planned a secret attack and super earth is under what i want to see is like a super event where like we have one massive pool of reinforcements and we all jump we all dump in and it's like it's you that's against the a horde. Idea. Make it work. Go. And if you don't, we lose the planet. Period. Oh. The planet is no longer inhabitable. Inhabitable. It's removed off the map, and it becomes a home world for whatever it is that uh, that won. Like I want that. That would be so cool. But that would be cool. I don't know if they're ever going to get to that point because I never saw it for Hell Divers. I don't know if it'll be for Hell Divers too. But it, yeah. it looks good. It looks good. But yeah, I've been playing a whole lot of Helldivers. Um, I love the game. It's really good. Um, it's very uh, easy to lose a lot of time into it, unfortunately, which I can fall down. Uh, what is it? Uh, my wife calls them TT holes because uh, uh, she does it with TikToks. So she falls down. down oh, I'm sorry. Hole, I'm sorry. Like Playing a video game is nowhere yeah, yeah. near the same as wasting time on on social media. Uh, I don't know about you, but TikTok can eat a whole bunch of hours if you're just not paying attention. No, no, I, I know it can. Yeah. It's just when you're playing a video game, you're you're still exercising little... your like reaction time oh, yeah, and like, your logic. Mechanically, you're yes. you're doing something very valuable and and properly entertaining. You know what I mean? Just also equally as time consuming. Yeah, it's, gotcha. it's equally as time yeah, consuming. Yeah, makes sense. I, and I, I, you know, I scroll through Instagram and shorts and stuff too. But like, I would never like compare video games me, to that. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, it's fair. Yeah, it's they're fair. so much better for you. You know what I mean? One, one has some studies I know that are going on and behind it for helping uh, alleviate dementia, not alleviate, but prevent dementia onset. Mm -hmm. And stuff yeah. like that. That checks out, honestly. Um, because just keeping your brain engaged and logic puzzles and things like that just naturally help with that. Oh, yeah. So I can guarantee you no YouTube short does that. Nope. Yeah. Not even one. Not even but one. audience, if you ever do want to watch our YouTube shorts, <laughs> you can go to youtube.com slash Taphaven Podcast. I have a ton of shorts. They're really good. They're not like normal shorts. You should go watch them. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see Nat and I yell at a bunch of Helldivers content. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. I watched a few videos and I was like, this is actually kind of funny. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty oh, good. Finally, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's one where uh, uh, we were on the Shrieker planet with the Flyers. And you're like, Nat! <laughs> I'm like, no. The story is true. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Dude. That was good. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, and yeah, you could see, dude, playing. did you see my perspective where I was like, Nat, Nat, where are you? But you're you're there <laughs> you're just, going towards the bile titan. I'm like, where is he? Where is he? And then you're like, I, I died to a bile, bile titan. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> oh, so good, so good. I love, I love it. That That's game. Good. It's so good. Well, well Anthony, well, what, Anthony what, what have you? So been I've playing? been playing a ton of Hell Divers, but <laughs> I played one other game. Uh -huh. So I've been playing. Ooh. I've been playing Hell Divers with Nat, 
and I played the okay. most disappointing game of the century with Eric. <laughs> And it's called. Oh Tribes no! I wasn't even going to bring this up. I wasn't. You know what? It's I wasn't even going to include the tribes. It's too sad. Now, did you this ever play tribes? Sad. Tribes Ascend. Were you, I played tribes, and that game's amazing. And tribes three. Yeah, it's crazy. Was great. It's it's tribes, but new. And uh -huh. na and and Eric and I got into a game, and and we're we're going, and I'm like, oh, I got the flag. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I score, and I'm like, okay. And then I go, and I get the flag again. I'm like, oh, I'm going, I'm going and I score, and I'm like, like Nat or not Nat, Eric, we're not playing against bots, are we? Oh yeah, we are definitely playing against bots because there are like yeah. 22 active There's players. Nobody playing, dude. No one's playing yeah. the game. Tribes is tribes is. Dead. It just came out two it weeks ago, been. like one week ago. Anthony, it's a dead franchise. They could have paid some streamers yeah. to, to stream they the game or something. They, they could have marketed have money. They, I haven't seen tribes well on any form of news media for years. They should. Well, that yeah. they should have done franchises. They dead. should have done a battle royale. Man, that's for rough. one and for they two. Should've. I'm pretty sure it's. You should have to pay to play the game. You have to pay to play the game, and then you have to pay to unlock like cosmetics within the game for, subscription. for like. Look at this man asking it's, for a it's subscription. It's stupid. Sad. No, no, free. It should be free to play. It should be free to play, but there's a subscription. No, no, no. It should be. It should be free to play, and then oh, they make money through cosmetics. Okay. Just like isn't like Apex Legends free to play? I don't know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wait. Right. I'm not sure. Someone fact check that. But basically, I mean, sure. it's not like they're doing a ton of work for tribes. I mean, that, they Dude, just remade a game that exists. Look, there are Dude, I was about to say, games. there's nothing. There is no player base for tribes to pull from Apex, from Fortnite, from um, uh, what's Riot's um, FPS? Oh, um, oh, Valorant. Valorant. Yeah, there's CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty. I think that people I think that people that play thing? Apex can really enjoy tribes because of the movement. Why would they stop playing Apex? Because they're all gonna get hacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you got me there. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> you got me there. Oh my god! Yeah, it's it's so crazy to me. But a, a lot of people, uh, like you, didn't even name it. I don't think, or at least I didn't hear you name it right there. But a lot of people just don't think about the scale of first-person shooters. Oh no! And how a majority of the market still just plays Counter Strike. Yeah, it's like ninety percent of the oh, FPS CS, market. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. But like, uh, but like. The rest of the market plays the top two, Apex yeah. and Valorant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just... And Halo... To think that Halo barely gets enough people from that to keep playing. Yeah. The fact that Halo, God upon gods... Dude. Well, the new, the new Halo the is The first rough, Halos, though. guys. The first Time Halos. out. Oh, yeah. The first like, Halos are great. Yeah, yeah. The, the new Halos are Not rough. the new Halos. Let's just... Time out. Real. From all the people, I just heard yesterday that the Halo TV series is good for my father-in-law. Oh, it's Garbo. No. <laughs> he was like, no, I needed to throw something on TV. There was nothing else to watch, and it was actually pretty good. <laughs> no. J John, a.k.a. Master Chief, takes off his helmet and his, and, and, and his sans helmet for the majority of season one. It is jarring and insulting. Have what? they seen the That's Mandalorian? The point. Have the they whole, seen the Mandalorian? The whole point is that they don't take the, the don't helmet take off. The helmet off. Have you not yeah. played Halo one through? I don't yeah. know all of they, them. Yeah, they literally screw with you for all of the Halos. Every time he goes to take his helmet off, he's alone, and then mm. it cuts to black, and mm. you the game ends. Well, mm. like they, his relationship <laughs> with the um his relationship Cortana. With, no, not Cortana. The original scientist who helps design the oh uh, yeah yeah the Spartans. The one who's like twenty seven when he's yeah. like eight years old. Yeah, and kidnaps him. Be, apparently, it's supposed to be like some kind of like there's there's something happening there where it's where it's kind of weird. 
and uh, it alludes to like it alludes to something. I don't remember. Um, I haven't watched it, but I watched some reviews of it, and I'm like, I I want no part in it because I saw the previews and I saw him take his helmet off. I was like, Ew. well, maybe maybe my father in law was able to enjoy it because he never played the game, so he didn't know the mistakes that were made. It's like uh, it's like somebody who has never watched Avatar: The Last Ever to watch it, right? And then be like, "Oh, this is really cool. This is really good." And then someone really that's like, "Yeah, yeah," I'm never speaking to you again. Oh, <laughs> watch the watch watch Zuko's and uh, Azula's Agni Kai, and then tell me that this is great. Did you try to watch the yeah. the live action Avatar? I have. Yeah, I have started watching it. Have I tried? No, you haven't tried. No, I mean, well, sorry, no, I have tried. We tried. I tried through one episode, Dang. and I was like, I can't. It was so I bad. Can't. It's not bad. It was bad. It's just, the, it's just not good enough. They changed so well, much. Oh, so so you know what I, you know what I said to, to be that I think is very poignant on this mm. is... That's a fun word. Poignant. 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 It's spelled yeah, all stupid, poignant. too. P-O-I-G-N-A-N-T. What? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so... The the thing about and this this is true for a lot of live actions that I found. Hmm. You have different ways of doing live actions, but for a live action be good, it has to represent the the original medium in such a way that is fun, impactful, and captures the feeling of that original medium. Yeah. And it has to do that in a transformative way. Like solo leveling is a great example. Anthony, you haven't gotten there yet. Huge. But but solo Huge. leveling, actually, you did see this scene. The first scene where he, where he kills the initial group. New, new spoilers for this. He kills the initial group, and it plays that song, and it's intense, and it adds. That moment is one page of the manga, essentially. Like, it's like a two or three pages, I mean, to maybe. to be fair, it's like the entire thing is one page, Eric. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. It's a webtoon, <laughs> not, a, not a manga. But, but so, I'm sorry. But, but like, that the manga has that moment. It means a lot in the manga, and there's a lot of depth there that was drawn in. Mm -hmm. The anime takes that, transforms it. Takes it up to 11. Does the feeling... Mm-hmm that you get from reading it and drives it home with the anime. Mm. The problem that I have with the current live action avatar is even in the scenes where it takes it one for one, it doesn't transform the, it, I don't see it any reason match, currently. Eric. It doesn't even match. I mean, that's valid, but uh, I think even more than that, I don't see any reason that somebody would go to me and be like, hey, I want to watch Avatar. Should I Should I do, what should I do? There is no reason to watch the live action over the anime. Nope. No. They get so many things can, wrong. And, 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 I can, and, I, and Eric, yeah. Anthony, I can see where they possibly saw like the niches that needed to be filled in and filled them in. I get that. Like, um, sure, you want to go ahead and flex some for amount of writing to go ahead and add some depth and some adult level of uh, processing of grief and taking on the mantle of Avatar and everything else that goes along with the cast that is Avatar. But you dropped the ball on all of it. Nothing comes across not flat. Dude. Yeah. It's all Dude, flat. Dude, the, the, the easiest example, like right away, we were identifying that they did the, all of this insanely unnecessary introduction of showing Aang with his, you know, master when he's young or before the storm yeah, and stuff. And it's like, this is slow. This is unnecessary. You should have cut this up and shown it to us in flashbacks, which happens in the right. anime. That would have been way more entertaining. Yeah. I don't know. I think the first scene from the anim from the uh, the live action oh. is actually what the route that I would have gone. I can't remember what that was. If I was if I was if I was trying to make a play for like the a more adult rendition of what was going on with this whole with Avatar: The Last Airbender, I would have kept that first scene because that's that's a real depiction of genocide. Why it. 
The only problem with that is if you think about it logistically, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, why would every single air nomad be in one place? It's so dumb. During this comet. It's so during dumb. During this comet and yeah. not see the Fire Nation coming. And so dude. and they could like and <sighs> some of them and they can fly away on air. Like, you that, know what? I'm, I'm going to stop. That was the biggest <laughs> thing that bothered me. Guess what? Aang can fly. He can just fly. No, he has not achieved. He has not achieved empty self. He has uh, not secure. in the Shut in the freaking live action show. He's just flying. I know. It's I saw stupid. It. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I'm he, his freaking staff they, they, is like they just, not they, there. But I understand. The only reason why I feel as if I can see what they're trying to do, but I just have contempt for how they've how they've approached it, is because I can see. W- I can see the possibility for it. I can see you delving into those stories between Azula and her father and really delving into the fact that this is a damaged relationship and it has been for a very long time. Cool. But if you rewind and take into account that this series was a child's was a children's story from from jump. And the reason why we're in love with it is because it grew with us and eventually gets to that point. We don't, there's a lot of things that we don't need that level of synthesis of young and old for us to process this medium in a way that like is going to give us a good feeling. A lot of the first season, I don't need, period. I, I skip almost half of the first season yeah, when same. I rewatch Avatar because the... I don't other, think other you than, can... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I... While I understand that you can skip it after you've seen it one time, the first the 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 contrast between Aang at the beginning of the first season, the choices that he makes, mm-hmm. the ch- the 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 almost childlike innocence that he tries to force, compared to the choices that he makes at the end of season three, that contrast I think is telling of his character arc. And is required. I think there I are. I think you can get it from like a from a parsed down version of maybe season but, one. But maybe I'm I, not saying that. I'm just saying that you need the, you need context. Yes, and yes. so you can't just get rid of all of that on the first watch. At least yeah. not as the medium is yeah, right no, now. I'm not saying you skip like entire chunks like like five to six episodes at a time i'm saying like there's no reason to be um there's no reason for i think it's like season episode like five four or five it's a complete filler episode well uh, okay like there's there are well that's the thing in nat and i's defense because we both love to skip parts of season one back then nickelodeon required a certain number of episodes to depict certain lessons to teach the children and the creators oh, of avatar no. chose let's put all of those right in a row so that people can just skip them <laughs> i did yes not that's why that. those are so bad like the no. one where you've got the two families yeah. being escorted yeah, through the so, thing so annoying. that's one of them so it's annoying. so boring it's yeah. i mean it's fun the There's first no time but like after that it's like mm, no. yeah, yeah. I think they do, uh, uh, while some of those, uh, I think the showrunners do a really good job of tying that into the overall story Mm -hmm. and really driving home some of those lessons that they did for Nickelodeon into the character development. I I do agree. Once you've seen them once and seen the parts that are good, they lose a lot of their value in just good cool factor but i think it also requires a lot of buy-in for the series for you to be able to sit down and watch a child lesson through this kind of series so i it's not for everybody i can't show mel be like hey let's watch this episode of two families arguing as they escort them through a canyon and they're constantly bickering it's it's just she's not gonna like it it's 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 not for everybody yeah, but are you gonna are you gonna tell them to watch the live action instead? Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. I'm going to yeah. give you a parsed version of <laughs> yes, of CD. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to proctor your experience Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to cut this down so that you can have the best rendition of Avatar hey. that I could possibly give you. So hey, you I do that for... It's fantastic. Yeah, I do that for One Piece. Yeah. One Piece could definitely use it. Oh my god! Yeah. There's so many episodes. You Wait, can if watch. if by some means my wife ever decides that we're gonna watch Naruto, I'm gonna do do the shit out of it for Naruto. Wait, you mean, I mean skipping the fillers, help. or what are you talking about? Uh, this is skipping like half of that show. Yes. Yeah. Like half of that show is unneeded. Yeah. Some of it is filler. Other parts of it are like they don't cover anything for like 20 episodes. I think in One Piece you have Arlong Park. That you need to see. You need to see Alabasta. You need to see all the pickups for all the crew. And you yeah. can skip you could skip pretty much from Alabasta all the way to to Skypea. Is this in good. Shippuden? This oh. is we switch back to one piece. <laughs> we switch, we back, switch to back, to back to one piece. piece. Guys, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I, I can't hold it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I will say the only thing that I wanna figure out is I need to watch it one more time, I guess, or figure out buddy. what you need from Fishman Island. You need the relationship between Nami and the crew. Because it's Sanji, no. it's Sanji. Uh, no, 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 uh, no. Post, post time skip. Fishman Island. Like when they go underwater, uh, they go to fish. It's the, fish, it's the first Island. flex. It's the first flex. That's yeah, nice. but I think there's only like... It's also there are only it's two important things. It's, uh, it's, it's those two things that you're talking about. No, it's not. Useless because they, they're, they're getting the, 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 they're, the only thing that you need uh-huh. is to know that Princess Shirahashi yeah. is actually an ancient weapon. Yeah. Spoilers. And, uh, uh, yeah. It's been up. That was, that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, this is very true. This is very true. <laughs> um, and then you need to see when the first time that he uses Fire Fist. Uh, Hawk. Hockey. Yeah, Red Hawk. Red Hawk, yeah. Like, oh, man, when he does Red Rock in Wano, dude, it dude, hits me right like here. Yeah. Especially because it means so much with a- Ace and Wano. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude. It's so good. Rock and like the impact, the freaking ah, oh, the build up to it. I will say, oh, regardless of anime. those in the audience who who watch or don't watch One Piece or think it's too long, One Piece is a gift that keeps giving exponentially. It just keeps on giving, guys. You're gonna hit like give it until Wano, and things are going. Things are that you can't. It's gonna you click. can't. You hey, can't shut, just say that hey, though. That's up. like shut up. That's like okay. Never, that's a never thousand mind. and. <laughs> Two hundred episodes and it's lobby and it's lobby. Yes, Ennis I think lobby it, is the, I think is you the really off. have to get you have to get to the I want to live. Yeah, you have to get to that, and then you have to give you got to give them the the Luffy position for the first gear, dude. I was, once I was like what twenty when that happened, and I yeah. lost my sh- I yeah. lost it. Oh. I think I think if you start one piece and you get to in, through Any's lobby. It's really hard not to just love what they've done, mm-hmm. even if you didn't like some of the pacing and pieces mm-hmm. that got you there. And it's right? the story, like you just it's, realize that there's layers upon layers of stuff. You realize that there's actually a reason to act, to read the crazy amount of speech bubbles that yeah. show up in the manga, if well, you're reading. Yeah. It's also just an investiture thing, too. Mm-hmm. Like. One piece, the more you invest to it, the more that story gives back to you yeah. in just feel good friendship moments. Mm-hmm. It, it's truly a story about adventure, exploration, and friendship. Yeah. It really is. It's part of the big three for that. Yeah. But the amount that it gives back for what you invest into it is really Huge. higher than almost any other Huge. anime or manga on the market. And that's why it's so popular. That's why it's one of the big three. And if you make it to the Indies lobby, you're, you're not putting it down. You're going to finish yeah. the. You're going to finish it if you get through it. Indies lobby. You're going to finish it because it's you want that off. payoff again. It's such a pop. Did y'all talk about the yeah. the live action series on Netflix? Because that got Ash and I hooked into the series. Mm-hmm. 
Dude, we did. We did. We, we, did. Uh, we, we talked about it. it. Yeah, I think episode no, I just three. Yeah. I just mm. Oh, no, no we, we didn't. It, but like, we the did. live action is doing a good job, too. I don't know how it's going to react to some of the later stuff. But like, if they yeah. keep it up, it's going to do really well. I That is a great one, too, of being so the transformative. Mm -hmm. But also right. keeping it in such a way that... It, it, it transformed it. It changed what the manga and the anime both do. There are a lot of things that are just fully different, but it kept the feeling. Yeah. And that is, it. and like, you can be like, oh, the CGI looked cheesy. And so, it doesn't matter because it feels good. And if it you don't like cheesy, good. now wait until you hit Wano. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. You're, you're worried about me for spoilers. Get out. Hey man, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's cheesy. I don't know what you're talking about. What but. games have has so Eric been playing? Samurai, Samurais are cheesy. So yeah. so now, well, yeah. What's your little? I'll I'll start with my my gambling addiction. Oh, I oh, I teased no. it a little bit at the end of end of last uh, the last episode. Gambling. I oh. have picked up a wonderful roguelite. Okay, called Bellatro. Bellatro. Man, this game is it, it 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 literally has big numbers and pop-off moments. It's just Oh no. Unbelievable how stupid oh, good this no. game is. Poker? It's not, not, it's 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 poker with insanity. It's a roguelike game. So so unlike poker, you're not playing against other people. What you're actually doing is you have something like an FTL or a roguelike where you go through a dungeon. And each dungeon, you essentially have to get a certain number of points for your poker hand. But you get different cards that change it so that you can you can play hands that don't exist in poker. You can you can do all kinds of crazy stuff like taking out cards of your deck or duplicating cards making glass cards. You can multiply your stuff by thousands and get billions upon billions. And man, the numbers go insane. So it's, it's, a, big just, so it's a big number dude, simulator. It's just, oh man, the the pop-off moments are crazy. <laughs> They're just crazy. You know, you'll be up at like 2 a.m. and you'll be like, I'm gonna go, I'm about to do a full straight house flush of all fives called the flush five. And then <laughs> it, you'll have all spades, all fives, and you'll click them and you'll be like, ha. And every time you click a new five and it pops it up a little bit out of your hand, your your eyes get bigger. And then you press submit. And the numbers go ding, 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 higher and higher and billions upon <laughs> billions. Oh, I'm man. sorry, but y'all must know Insanity. that the last time I ever talked about poker or played poker with Eric was 15 <laughs> years ago when we were teenagers. And all he oh could God. do every round was go, tree fitty, fold, tree fitty. Fold. I mean, All in. That wasn't me, actually. Fold. Funnily <laughs> enough, that was. I think. I think you may misconstrue. I did it once or twice as a joke, but we had a friend named Zach who did that every single time. He was the one who and did the it pigs. every time. And I and the pigs. Everybody. They. They did it. They did it. They did it. Yeah. True fitty. Oh my god. Those and things. then they said that but, for like six but, months when we were in school. True fitty. They did. They did. Dude, Oof, it's school time during the, the, the oh, man. those years was not a good time for anybody. So I understand I mean, the, the same. We had nothing out, better. Hand. We had nothing better. Yeah. No. I never thought so, you would so bring so up poker though. again. Dude, this this game is so cool. <laughs> like, I, I joke about it, but it really just does feel satisfying. It, it, it's one of those things where you can put on a show and play it on the side. And there's actually a great deal of depth. Like, you look at this game and you think poker and you're like, that's boring as shit. But in actuality, they have you level up your hands by getting planet cards. Each planet aligns to like full house, three of a kind. You can do five of a kinds and you can start optimizing your multipliers and you can build different builds based around different hands. So one run, you could do like a full house run. And then another run, you could do a single card run. 
and each one has varying levels of difficulties. They have different decks. So like there's one deck that is all spades and hearts. There's another deck that has only tens or something like that. And so there are all these types of things that you can do. Each run can feel super different and give totally different results. And each power-up card or joker, as they call it, has totally different effects. And they have glass cards and modifier cards. The amount of depth that they have added to poker is really, really cool. It's not going to be for everybody. It is, at the end of the day, a roguelike plus poker. And there's no really getting around that. You're playing poker hands and trying to optimize a deck builder. Hmm. Because you are taking out decks. But I would say if you're interested in deck builders and you like roguelike games, this is going to probably be the game of the year for you. I, I can't... The amount of love and care that the developer put into this game is astounding. Mm. And there's hidden features. There's hidden hands that you can find by having special cards and combining them with other ones. There are all kinds of just cool little gems inside of this poker game and it i i it slaps. man it, it slaps. slaps it slaps man so it's actually it is really on cool sli- it's like, on sale there is a deck building uh uh sale? fest on steam oh, that's dope yeah. it's on sale it's on sale, it on sale for 10 percent off for until april 1st 10% which off. won't help any of you guys uh-huh. because this isn't coming out for like several weeks <laughs> i was about to say this is <laughs> this isn't gonna yeah yeah, by the time y'all see this, uh, that sale will be gone. Sorry, audience. So sorry. Sorry, you couldn't but save a dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. Yeah, it's not too much. If it was tree fifty, there's but, a there's a there's a few deck builders in here that I'm like, okay, maybe not for yeah. maybe not for the poker game, but like, yeah, deck builders have always been like a favorite of mine. Yeah, this is uh, an amazing Lead one. Spider. Now there there has been another game. It just came out. Got another uh, one for us. Yesterday, and I don't, I can't imagine that this is accurate because it says I've played it for 20, 20 hours. There's no way. Um, but I've only had it for like a day or two. Uh, but Rift Wizard Two. Rift Wizard Two. And come and join me around the campfire of niche bullshit, as Nat would call it. <laughs> it is <for> niche <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh, God. It's... Oh, no. It is wonderful. It is so much fun and so addictive. And probably most of our audience has not played Rift Wizard 1. I don't imagine a lot of people are playing Rift Wizard. But Rift Wizard is freaking fantastic so it is another roguelike game terminal style very old school graphics but with old school graphics comes unbelievably complex interactions Mm -hmm. so you play as a wizard you're going through to save the world and kill this evil wizard you start on level one and you go through x number of realms and then by the time you each realm is one one page like one screen right you kill all the enemies on it the next rifts unlock you choose one of the three rifts you move on to the next one you kill all the enemies and you keep going until you get to the very end as you dive deeper it gets harder and harder Mm -hmm. and harder there are statues that add crazy blood magic and all this kind of nonsense but there's like 250 this is early access and it has like 250 different intermingling spells that all have three to five different variations and builds that you can go into them that's heavy and it has an additional five pages of skills that you can get that alter your build all together so you can go in pick a blood magic thing and they get a blood magic skill and it 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 just turns into insanity you fall into a hole of optimization is pretty Dude, much what happens and it's it becomes so it, wonderful it's a power fantasy in a game 
dude it is cool it but is, o- honestly so leveling in a power fantasy in a game yeah <laughs> and so it, it i think for me one of the most enjoyable things about it is that you have this toolkit that is very huge and every screen is like a puzzle because it's turn-based mm-hmm. so when you make a move your enemies make a move yeah and you just move click one click one it's very slow paced so it turns into just this puzzle game almost where you're trying to optimize your build optimize your route and destroy, defeat all of these enemies with your different spell toolkits as you get it and it just ends up being very satisfying and enjoyable to go through and do all of that mm. so I really enjoy it. I know for a lot of people, the graphics are, are going to be a turn off nowadays. Needed to look shiny and pretty, my God. Yeah, this. I mean, it, it doesn't look shiny and pretty, unfortunately. I I would love to see a game like this that looks shiny, look shiny and, pretty, and pretty, but yeah, absolutely, this is definitely not it. Um, yeah. but it's only done by one guy. There's only one developer. Really. Yeah, and he did Rift Wizard One, which I played, and Rift Wizard One is. Um, very fun as well, worth going back and playing. But Rift Wizard 2 has a new engine update. It has more spells, more interactions, more monsters, no, more everything. And it's only in early access. And he's going to add, he said he's going to add like hundreds of things before the actual release of the game. So mm. it's going to be pretty insane. Sounds robust. I very know robust. It's, it's very granular so i can see why you're like hell yes yes yeah yeah Um, totally my type of game but i love roguelike deck builder slash optimization mechanic games that they're just really satisfying for me absolutely i love to i love to put on youtube videos and sit there and think about rift wizard and (laughs) just chill so that's how eric relaxes yeah dude dude that's what i was i i think i played rift wizard 2 until like 2.30 2.30 or 3 last My night. dude. So. I don't know how you do it. Okay. Well, friends, lovers, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, we, we've extended into one of our longest episodes yet, which is By really far. unfortunate because I know not everybody stays up as late as I do. Nope. So with that, a few whiskeys down and another wonderful week of the Tap Haven podcast, we'll, we'll bid you all adieu. All hearts and minds are clear. Fantastic. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, I believe we have our socials and streaming pages somewhere around here or down in the doobly, whatever. YouTube.com slash at Borderman. <laughs> I was about to say, Nat, Anthony's the yeah. only one that has socials, yeah, and shut up, shut Nat, up, you and up, I don't have. Up, sh- shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna find where he puts his fingers and put Anthony's like logo and screen out in the front of each of, one of his fingers. The amount of sass that you have for me at the end of this episode is uncalled for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. We're gonna have but, to talk about Ash's yeah. creation next time. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you have to do what? He brings it up at the end. <laughs> That's what happened last time. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. And one other game that I'm curious you. about. Okay. Ooh, well, we God. have something to look forward to for next mm. time. Yeah. Thank y'all for listening. Yeah. We love y'all. Yeah. Cheers. And we'll see you in the next, next one. one. Bye. Peace.